नॉलेज इट बेसिक फाउंडेशन ऑफ ऑल ह्यूमन अचीवमेंट्स ह्यूमन सक्सेस ह्यूमन डिस्कवरीज ह्यूमन इन्वेंशंस ह्यूमन टेक्निकलिटीज ह्यूमन कंस्ट्रक्शंस and all the prosperity the human beings have achieved materially on the other hand the highest spiritual achievement called nirvana in sanskrit and nibbana in pali realized by the buddha is not based on any knowledge because nirvana is beyond the human knowledge since nirvana is the unknowable that can never be known because to know there is somebody to know and something to know nirvana is not a thing that can be known it is beyond all material things non material beyond energy material things are existing in time and space and can be measured by time and space nirvana is a state beyond time and space it has no boundaries called spatial dimensions of length breadth and height it has no time duration limited like the past the present or the future it is called akaliko in the buddha's language called pali because it is beyond the time dimensions it is called anantam boundless limitless the meaning of the word ananta in space it is unlimited both in space and time but it is denoted as sandittiko and a pasiko in pali the buddha's language sandittika means it can be seen here that is the verbal meaning that means nirvana is here sandittika means nirvana is now a pasika means verbally a pasika is can be seen here sandittika can be seen now that means nirvana is here and now now means any moment that you can call now it has no time duration and here means any place that we can call here it has no limitation with regard to space in fact nirvana is beyond all the human knowledge that we have acquired through our sense organs nirvana is beyond sensory perception it cannot be perceived but can be perceived are only ideas 
In fact, both according to the Buddha and the modern scientific discoveries, no one can know the world outside us, outside oneself. We know the world outside through our sense organs. Our eye, our ear, our nose, our tongue, our skin, and also our mind that can conceive images of the things outside us. What we know is not the actual reality of things outside us. All our knowledge, therefore, is faulty. It is not the real truth that we know through our sense organs. We can smell even what a dog can smell. We can hear what a dog can hear. Sometimes the sense organs of animals are more powerful and sharper than ours. But even their sense organs are limited. That means our sensory capacities are limited. Therefore, we do not know the actual nature of anything. Therefore, knowledge that we acquire acquired through sense organs <clears throat> is not conducive to the spiritual achievement, the final spiritual achievement called Nirvana. It is beyond knowledge. In fact, during the period when the Buddha discovered Nirvana, or realized Nirvana, there were many intelligent human beings who were in search of the truth, not through knowledge, but through meditation, through insight, not through physical sight, but through the sight of wisdom called insight. They were called Satya Gavesi, in search of truth. Even the Buddha, as a royal prince, left the royal palace to be a recluse, going in search of the ultimate truth of things. The ultimate truth that the Buddha has realized is called Nirvana. And the concept of Nirvana is there even before the Buddha's enlightenment. Enlightenment is the realization of Nirvana. Nirvana can be realized but cannot be known. It is the unknowable. We can know, as I mentioned earlier, only thought forms, because we cannot know anything really, actually, through our sense organs. What we are aware, what we call knowledge, what we call that we know, are only mental images formed on the basis of the data supplied by our weak sense organs with limited capacities. Therefore, even our knowledge is a distorted knowledge, not the actual reality. Nirvana is beyond all that knowledge. Our mind is occupied by our knowledge. What we know, what we think, what we imagine, what we feel, etc. 
that is the entire content of our mind. Realization of Nirvana or enlightenment is realizing the ultimate emptiness of the mind. Empty means empty of its content. Therefore, the ultimate truth realized by enlightenment is the emptiness of the mind free of its entire content. Free of entire content means free of thinking and feeling. That's what the mind contains. All thinking and feelings that we experience are based on our desire to know. As I mentioned at the beginning, our desire to know things is the basis of our material success, material development, material achievements, material discoveries, material inventions, the material prosperity that we all enjoy. Based on knowledge, knowledge that we acquired to decide to acquire knowledge. Therefore, to be knowledgeable is the basis of material development of human beings. But for spiritual development, ending in the realization of Nirvana is the complete extinction of desire to know. As long as there is a desire to know, even the Nirvana, desire to know Nirvana, is an impediment, is an obstacle in realizing Nirvana. Because when there is a desire to be enlightened, desire to know Nirvana, there is a knower and a knowable. Realizing when, when you know something, there is a knower and there is something that is known. But in realizing Nirvana, the realizer and the Nirvana are not two separate entities. They are one and the same. That is why enlightenment and enlightened one become one and the same. An enlightened one is called a Buddha. In the Vakkali Sutta, Buddha said, to Vakkali, a pupil of the Buddha, Yo dhammam pasati so mam pasati, yo mam pasati so dhammam pasati. Whoever sees me sees nirvana, and whoever sees nirvana sees me. That means Buddhahood and or the enlightenment and the realize the final truth of nirvana realized by enlightenment are not two separate entities. That is why one can see the Buddha when, my, when one sees Nirvana and when one sees Nirvana, one can see Buddha. When one sees Buddha, one can see Nirvana, according to the Vakkara Sutta, as they are one and the same. It means we are Nirvana in our real na nature. Our reality is Nirvana. 
everything is an illusion. All our knowledge are illusions. And all the world that we know, everything in the world that we know, according to Buddha, are illusions. All what we know are not outside us, but inside us. We are experience only a mental world. That is what the Buddha said in the Rohitasa Sutta. Vyamatta Kalevere Panyapi Mirokancha. The entire world that we experience is within our body, which is one fathom, means, which, is about, which is about six feet. What he meant by that is we experience only what our sensory organs dictate to our mind, signal to our mind. They are weak signals. Weak means not knowing the real nature of things. They impart to the mind a partial knowledge, imperfect knowledge, faulty knowledge, faulty data. Based on the data, we create our mental world. The real nirvana is beyond that noble mental world. But we know means we know not the things outside us, but only the mental reflection of things outside. That means we know only our mental images, our ideas. We know something means we have an idea. For example, we may have the idea, a mental picture of a mother, father, brother, sister, wife, husband, etc. A tree, a mountain, a river, etc. They are only mental creations. Even when we are in front of objects, as I mentioned earlier, no sense object, sense organ can know the real nature of the object in front of us. We know only what our sense organs reflect in our mind. They are reflections. Reflections are not actually real. They appear to be real. They are apparent realities. For example, <clears throat> when you go before a mirror, your image may appear in the mirror, but the image in the mirror is neither you nor somebody else, but it is an illusion, appearing like yourself. But realization nirvana is realizing the actual reality. What is the actual reality? The emptiness of the mind includes emptiness. The mind means emptiness of everything. Our mind is the world in which you live, the universe in which you live. Therefore, the entire universe can be called emptiness in reality. That emptiness has no boundaries, no beginning, no end. Boundless. Because Buddha says anantam, boundless space. Boundless in time, akalika. Even this universe, beyond all the boundaries, it has no boundaries. The real space, that emptiness of this space, the boundless space, has never been created by somebody. There is no creator of the emptiness or the empty space, the boundless space. And there is no point of time in which the universe was created, the emptiness was created. It is beyond time dimension and also beyond the space dimension. 
the ultimate truth called the emptiness. And it is not noble because our petty mind is bounded, limited with its capacity. The mind has no capacity to realize the boundless nirvana. Therefore, nirvana is called animitta. It is not an object of the mind. It is not an idea. We can form an idea of nirvana, but that is not real nirvana. It is only a reflection. Atakkavachara, we cannot think of nirvana. To think of nirvana, it must be limited. It must have some form. Nirvana is formless. In the Kevata Sutta, Buddha mentioned the nature of the emptiness of Nirvana. He used the word Anantang in that. It can be realized that emptiness can be realized by oneself. Vijnana. Anidasana, you can't give an example to it. It is unique. It has no duplicate. It cannot have a duplicate. It's so boundless. Anidasana. And it is not made of any physical elements. In God the Buddha's discovery, the universe is created by four elements called Patavi, Apo, Tejo, Vayo. And this Kevada Sutta says that the Nirvana is devoid of all physical elements called Patavi, Apo, Tejo, Vayo. Therefore, it is devoid of all physical forms that can be called long, short, small, big, etc. Good, bad, etc. That means Nirvana is beyond, as I mentioned earlier, beyond all boundaries of time and space. Therefore, we cannot mentally form an image of Nirvana, the real Nirvana. We can form an idea of Nirvana, but the idea is not the real Nirvana. We can have an idea of anything or anybody, but there is an idea. And we can use a name to denote the idea, but that is only a name, only a symbol. For example, the single word Nirvana or the Sanskrit word Nirvana or the Pali word Nibbana denoting the ultimate truth are only symbols, verbal symbols used in language. That word is not the real Nirvana. The idea that we form in our mind is not the real Nirvana. That is why Nirvana is said to be Atakkavachar, you can't think of Nirvana. Animitta. Animitta means you can ha cannot have it as a mental image. You can create a mental image of Nirvana based on the knowledge you acquired through reading or hearing or experiencing, but that is only a mental image, but not the real Nirvana. Therefore, we can say Nirvana is the unknowable that cannot be known because when you realize Nirvana, when we are enlightened, there is nobody to know Nirvana. The self vanishes altogether. Thought vanishes all, vanish. thinking vanishes altogether. Feeling vanishes altogether. It is anti emptiness that cannot be known mentally, that can be known as an idea. 
Nirvana is not, the real Nirvana is not an idea, not an image, not anything material. It is beyond this material world and it is also beyond the mental world. Nirvana is beyond the mental world means Nirvana is the unknowable. But Buddha has mentioned there is Nirvana, the real Nirvana. In Tati Nibbana Sutta, Buddha said, Ati Nibbuti. When Buddha goes up, as mentioned, there is a Nirvana, there is, Nirvana is a truth, really there is Nirvana, but there is no one enlightened in the Nirvana. Ati Nibbuti na Nibbuto. That means the ego vanishes completely when we are enlightened. The idea of self vanishes. Not only the idea of self, it is beyond our body and beyond our mind. Attainment of Nirvana, Sanya Vedaita Nirodha. Sanya Vedaita means sensing mental, sensory signals. But this is a state beyond sensing sensory signals. That means Sensing is the basis of our thinking and sensing is the basis of mind. It is beyond the basis of the mind. That is why Nirvana can be realized but cannot be known. It is the unknowable and that is our ultimate truth which is nothing but emptiness. Everything is existing in emptiness. Emptiness is neither created, can neither be destroyed. Emptiness is there everywhere, boundlessly, both in time and space. And everything in space and time exists within limits. But the ultimate truth of Nirvana is beyond limit, therefore it can be known by our limited mind, limited knowledge, limited sensory capacities. <laughs>